you are most likely aware that STAR 2.0 will now include new item types that are not multiple choice. But what will they look like on individual TEKS? Angela here from Custom Classroom helping make test prep simple. To begin, I broke down all the released STAR 2.0 questions for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. I looked at both the full-length practice test as well as the new question type online samplers available on the TEA website. I then grouped them by TEK to better understand how students might see the new questions within each standard, since not every item type pairs well with each standard. I'll begin in TEK order with word meaning, where the old question was simply asking for the meaning and multiple choice. A new question could look very much like that, as well as a multi-select question where students have to select two meanings for the word. Context clue, where students were selecting the clues to help meaning for the words, you will see some similar to the old, as well as multi-part questions where students now have to first select the meaning in part A and then pick the context clues that support that in part B. There's also text entry under this standard where students will then have to look at a given sentence and type in a word or words from that sentence that provide clues for the meaning. As far as definition or dictionaries, these questions were very similar to the old test. When looking at the Greek and Latin roots, these similar questions were also very similar, except I did see some multi-part questions where in part A, they had to use the root, um, the Greek root to find the definition or meaning of a word, but then also select the phrase within the text that supported that meaning. I did not find any new item types or questions on purpose for reading, generating questions, or making predictions. Then looking at um, connections or connecting multiple texts, there was a lot of questions like this and a lot of a more multiple choice, similar to the old test where they simply asked for the different difference or similarity. But I also saw some multi-select questions here where students had to select multiple ideas that connect or compare two passages together. Inferencing, now this was a big hitter. There was a lot of questions on this, which is not a big surprise. The old questions were formatted in a variety of ways with multiple choice, but they're also going to be presented in multi-select, where students have to select two inferences based on the text. They're also going to probably see a short constructed, constructed response with inferencing, like this question where it says, why do many business experts believe that a recognizable logo is valuable? Support your answer with evidence from the article. Key ideas or main idea. There will be some questions like the old style multiple choice where they're selecting the key idea of the story, but they'll also see some multi-part where first they're selecting the key idea and then they're, they're finding the details from the text that support that main idea. Synthesizing, I didn't really have old questions that I had found on this. And so I thought that was very interesting that this example match table grid where students had to look at which parts of the text supported a statement and which one supported one text and which one supported both texts. Written response, old version was a composition separate from the actual reading test. Now you're gonna see extended constructed response paired with a reading passage, similar to the one I have here. Now I sometimes saw this labeled as 6B versus 11B, but Basically, these, these questions are going to be embedded within the text. Using text evidence. So this question seemed very similar where students were simply selecting an answer choice of the text that supported um, what the question was staying, stating. I did also see some multi-select here where students had to select multiple lines from the text that supported the conclusion. And I was really surprised here. I didn't see any examples that were hot text where students are basically selecting from within a chunk of the text because this pairs very well with using text evidence and I see this a lot in multi-part questions. Summarizing, uh, you will still see the old version of 
select the best summary. But here you're also going to see a variety of new types where this one is still multiple choice, but it's very different where the students are going to read a summary and then they have to select which line would best complete the summary, what needs to be added. You're also going to see most likely you're going to see a match table grid on this teak where students are going to take details from the text and they got to decide if it needs to be included in the summary or not. And also multi-select where they're going to select multiple lines that should be included in the summary. And I thought this was a, a very different type of question. So I would look at this one closely where there is an incomplete summary given and students are basically going back and finding the lines that they would need to plug in to complete this summary. And detail questions seem pretty similar to the old straight multiple choice. I did not find any questions on tone or voice when it related to 6H or writing to defend the author's claim. Then theme, you're going to have some questions where they ba students basically have to select the theme found in the passage from multiple choice. But they're also probably going to see a match table grid on this to show how if lines from this text are actually supporting the theme or not supporting the theme. There is also a multi-part, and I've seen this a lot across multiple uh, different states where the theme, students have to select the theme, but then in part B, they have to find actual evidence from the text that supports why that is the theme. Character, I didn't have great old questions on this one, and the new ones were just pretty much multiple choice about something that the character was doing in the text. I did find one short constructed response here where students have to write about what effect did the character have on the resolution of the conflict. And the most important thing on the short constructed response are using specific quote evidence from the text. Then plot, I did see multiple choice questions where they're just writing about the plot, the plot specifically a lot of conflict. Setting, same thing, I saw multiple choice questions asking about how the setting contributed to the plot, as well as some multi-part where you're going to answer a question about how the setting is affecting the plot and then select the exact lines from the text where this is shown as evidence. And I also saw a short constructed response question um, where students had to talk about how the setting was involved in the conflict. And I, I found this pretty surprising that there were so many examples of setting when um, really prior, there was not a lot of questions on setting. Another huge surprise that I saw was on the standard of genres, there were a ton of questions on genres. Now, previous to this, I hadn't really seen it come up on testing, so I thought that was surprising here. In this example, it says, what character, characteristics of realistic fiction does the author include in the story? And there was also a short constructed response where, where students had to answer what characteristics of the story help the reader identify it as realistic fiction. And again here, most important thing is text evidence. Now on to poetry. There's a variety of questions on poetry and multiple choice previously. And here I also found a short constructed response where students had to decide what was the most likely reason the poet's rhymes in the first and last lines. And so the students are gonna really have to be able to go back and support um, some of this reasoning on, on why the poet is doing certain things within the poem. Next on playwright or drama, I found not very many, I didn't really find questions in the past specifically labeled as these. And I found that interesting, but here's an example of a multiple choice one, of what it might look like. There's also a multi-select where they're asking um, to find two correct answers. And this one's specifically about the character's behavior. The next big surprise I found was how many thesis slash controlling idea questions there were considering I hadn't really found any before on old tests. So you will see some multiple choice questions about controlling idea or the thesis of the story. Features, I also didn't have a ton of old questions on, but I found there was a new question that's just a multiple choice about a feature in the text. And then another huge surprise was how many questions were labeled organizational patterns, which I would kind of also connect with text structures in the past. But this one had a ton of questions. A lot of them were multiple choice where students either had to select what the structure was 
or explain how the structure contributed to the overall text. And there was a short constructed response on this where again, students are trying to kind of explain how this problem solution structure helped the reader better understand the text. I did not find any claim questions, which is a surprise since it's a readiness standard, as well as counter argument. And then there weren't any on intended audience. Now, author's purpose was a huge hitter. There was a ton of questions on this one. Before and now, you're going to see some multiple choice questions where students are just selecting what the author is trying to do. But they're also probably going to see a multi-part where first you're selecting either their purpose or their message, and then you're supporting that answer in part B with actual text evidence. They're going to probably see a multi-select where they're going to select two of the reasons why the author maybe did or wrote what they wrote and probably a short constructed response where they're also having to defend it. This one had a ton of questions. So I really feel like these are all going to be seen this year. And then I didn't find any that were labeled specifically text structured. I would really pair a lot of them with what is the organizational patterns. Teeth. Graphics, I found uh, very similar to last year or previous years multiple choice questions. Figurative language, same thing, multiple choice, deciding about that specific uh, skill. Literary device, I didn't find really very many old ones, but there was a multiple choice question on irony. And point of view was very slim in this, where there was just a couple questions. One was, will the point of view help the reader understand? And then here you see text entry again, which is not a very easily paired with many teaks. I have saw it in with context clues and then now with point of view where students are actually going to write in if it's the first person or third person point of view. Mood, voice, and tone. I found a couple multiple choice questions asking about these. As you can see, that's a lot of information. I created a cheat sheet as well. It is a PDF that you can download if you click in the description, and it basically will show you the old versus all the new that I found by Teak. Then if you're thinking, okay, well, how can I use all this knowledge to help my students become better prepared? Well, I've got you covered there. I took all this knowledge that I found after breaking down the Teaks. I used them to specifically create individual sets of task cards by Teak so that they target not only the teak and standard, but they seamlessly pair with all these new item types and what should be expected within each teak. I hope you found this video helpful. If you are looking to learn more about the new star tests, you should subscribe to my channel so you get notified when all my new videos are posted.